Okay, so we're going to begin today with actually a little warm up. So I'd like you to pause the video and go ahead and complete the warm up that it asks you to do, um, which goes through this whole first page. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going to pause it. Um, pause the video, try to complete this first page and then start it again. Okay, so what you should be able to produce at this point is certainly the formula for slope between two points, which is <laughs> m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then it gives us a few examples um, to use our formula with. So on A, you should have had negative two subtract two over nine subtract negative five, which gives us negative four over 14. And we can reduce that to negative two sevenths. On B, you would have had negative seven subtract three over six subtract six, which gives me negative 10 over zero. And we can't divide by zero. So we should have had an undefined slope on B. On C, we have negative two subtract negative four, negative three subtract negative eight. Both of these, we have to be careful to actually add that in. So that gives me positive two over positive five. Okay, so just a refresher on finding slope. We'll use that actually more in our next lesson um, in terms of writing equations, but something we need to continuously practice. It's gonna keep coming back to us. Super important that we have that um, scale down. Then it goes into writing the equation of a line given the following information. So today we are transitioning kind of in terms of what our, what our focus is for the unit. So our unit two start, started with graphing. So we did functions and graphing with a table and, and how to find slope. Then we started graphing lines using slope intercept form. And from there, we talked about horizontal and vertical lines, parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, we talked about graphing in standard form. Then we started looking at things that weren't lines. So what about if we wanted to graph inequalities? What if we wanted to graph absolute value functions? Um, and then yesterday we talked about how do we go from the graph to writing each of those things, inequalities, lines, and absolute value. For the remainder of the unit, we are going to be taking kind of all of that information that comes with knowing how to graph. And instead of graphing, we're going to focus on producing the equation for the line, okay? And so yesterday we talked about this a little bit um, where we know our line is y equals mx plus b. So we can write the equation of our line if we have m and we have b. And x and y are my input and output. Those are not set values. Those are varying depending on where we are, right? If we think about the graph, there's all sorts of x and y combinations that fit into that line. So for a through d here, we're given the slope and we're given the y-intercept. So we just need to substitute it in to our y equals mx plus b equation. If my slope is four, then I have y equals four x and my y-intercept is negative three, subtract three. If my slope is one, then I have y equals one x and my y-intercept is negative four. This is a slope of zero, so this should be a hoi, right? Horizontal line, zero slope, y equals a number. I'm not going to leave it as like y equals zero x. I'll just write it as y equals a number. It'd be y equals two. <laughs> this has a slope of four, y-intercept of six. So y equals four x plus six. Okay, that's it. If I know my slope and y-intercept, I should be able to write an equation in a second. Same idea if I'm given a graph. This is what we did yesterday. So here on my graph, I can see that my y-intercept is at two and my slope appears to be one over one here. So knowing my slope and my y-intercept, I can graph my line, one x plus two, or I can write my line. On B, it looks like my y-intercept is at four, and the slope appears to be negative three over one. Knowing this information, I can put that together and write the equation of my line is y equals negative three x plus four. Mm 
Oops, I thought I paused it. Sorry that I didn't. I need a new pen. My pen died. <clears throat> On C, we can see that our y intercept is at negative 2. And rise over run is 4 over 1. So slope is 4 over 1. And I can produce my equation 4x subtract 2. OK? Now we're going to look at what happens when we don't just have everything we need, right? When we're given slope and y-intercept, we're basically given everything we need, we write the equation and we're done. What if instead of being given both slope and y-intercept, we're given slope and a point? And so when I write my equation, always, no matter what information is given to me, in the end, I want slope and I want y-intercept. Here it says, write an equation whose slope is three. So that's good, I have slope. And passes through the point negative two, five. So if I'm given a point, what I'm being given is an x, y value, where x is negative two and y is five. So if I were to write my equation, how I have it. So first I'll just write it with the slope. So I know I have three x plus b. And this is the piece that's missing now, okay? So up until now, we, I said, write the equation of a line. You had B, you had M, you wrote the equation. Now I have M, I'm missing B. So I need, to, I need to figure out how to find it. And what we do is we use our point and we plug in five for Y and we'll put in negative two for X <clears throat> in my equation. And by doing that, I have my slope. I have one of the points that lie on that line. I have an X and a Y. And now the only variable that remains is B. So I'll be able to solve and figure out what B is. So I have five equals negative six plus B. <clears throat> and I add six to both sides and I get B equals 11. Okay, so by having one point on that line and the slope of that line, I can figure out where my Y intercept is. So now I have M and I have B and I'm just gonna kind of put them together and write my equation, Y equals three X plus 11. Okay, so now it's gotten a little bit harder, right? So we're missing an important piece. We have to do some work to find that piece and then I put it together in the end. So let's look at a couple more of these. So on example E, I have a slope of four. So if I were to write my equation, I have four X plus B. I don't know what B is, okay? But I do know that this point, this X, Y value lies on the line. So I can plug in negative two for Y and three for X and I'll be able to find my missing y-intercept value by solving for b. And I would solve for b by subtracting 12 here, and I'd get negative 14 equals b. So that's great, we solve for our variable, but we still need to put it together. So here's my y-intercept, here's my slope, put it together into an equation equation of my line here would be y equals 4x subtract 14. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at a couple more together and then I'll let you try some. So same idea here, we have our slope and we have a point. So I'm going to substitute my x and my y value in in order to find this critical number that I need here. I need to know my y-intercept. Careful with positives and negatives. Negative times a negative is a positive. Subtract six from both sides. And I get that my y-intercept is negative eight. Slope, y-intercept, put it together. y equals negative two x subtract eight. It's the equation of my line. Now, Anytime I get an undefined or a zero slope, my life is a lot easier because I already have in my mind that something with a slope of zero is a horizontal line, the zero slope 
y equals a number. So I know that my equation looks like this. And way back when, when we did that, and I'll see if I even have those notes right here. When we looked at those Hoy and Vux equations, okay, we did this. We took these notes and I said it's y equals a number. And that means that all the ordered pairs, y is going to equal that number and then x can be whatever. Okay, and that's what my graph looks like. So I actually don't even have to go through the process like we do up above. If I know it's a hoy, it's a horizontal line, zero slope, y equals a number, I look at my ordered pair and I go, y equals three, and I'm done. That's the horizontal line that would go through that point with zero slope. I also think those are, if you get stuck, easy ones to do a kind of quick sketch or even kind of mentally think about what that would look like. If I go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, three, and I know it's a horizontal line, boom, there's my three, y equals three. It's a horizontal line where y equals three. So now um, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna ask you to try the three examples um, on the right-hand side of this page. Let's see how we did. I have on F, we get a B value of eight and here's the equation of my line Y equals negative two X plus eight. On H, I got a B of nine. My equation is Y equals negative X plus nine. Now on J, this is undefined, which means I know it's a vertical line, undefined slope X equals a number. The number X equals is four, okay? So now that um, whole idea of parallel and perpendicular lines that we talked about a little while ago, we're gonna look at again. And so we know that lines that are parallel have the same slope and lines that are perpendicular, that their slopes are opposite reciprocals. We talked about that earlier in the notes. So sometimes we're given the same equation or the same, sorry, the same information, slope, and a point, okay? So here, the information we're given was slope and a point. This is the same information. It's just providing that information in a different way. So it says, write an equation of a line that's parallel to this line and passes through this point, meaning I have an x, y value, oops, at one, five, and a slope, well, parallel means it should be the same slope, okay? So if it is parallel to this line, then the slope that I should use is two. I don't care what the y-intercept is, okay? But what we know about parallel lines is they run on the same rate, they have the same rate of change. So if it's parallel to this line, then the line I'm looking for should also have a slope of two. So really it's the same information as the last page, right? I have slope and I have a point. And so if I want to write an equation of that line, y equals mx plus b, well, I know my slope is two. And I know that one of my points is at one, five. And I can solve for b, subtract two, and b equals three. And then the equation that is parallel to this line and goes through this point is y equals 2x plus 3. And so what this is asking for, just to kind of give you a visual of what we just found, let me change what I'm sharing. So it says, find a line that's parallel, it gave us this line and goes through this point. So it's saying, here's the point one five. We wanna find the line that runs through that point and is parallel to this one, which we said, well, we know that it has to have the same slope and we used what we had to solve. And we say, that's the line that has a y-intercept of three instead of a y-intercept of one, like the line that we were given. That line, this red line is parallel to the line they gave us and passes through the point they gave us. Okay, that's really what we're trying to accomplish there. When we are given parallel or perpendicular, it's really just a special way of giving us our slope. Okay, so here it says we want to find a line perpendicular to this, which means we want the opposite reciprocal slope. Okay, so M is going to be instead of four, 
four over one, it's going to become, we know we should use a slope of negative one fourth. And it says going through this point, so use an x, y value of eight negative two. And if I wanna write the equation of that line, well, we know we should use a slope of negative one fourth. And we have a point where y is negative two and x is eight. Negative one fourth times eight is going to give me negative two. Adding two to both sides is going to give me b is zero. That's fine, b is zero. So the equation of my line, if b is zero and the slope is negative one fourth, would be y equals negative one fourth x plus zero, or just y equals negative one fourth x. So now I'm gonna do a couple of these with you, only like two and then I'll let you do a few on your own. So it gets a little harder in these examples because these lines were given to me in y equals, okay? This example A, it's not giving me y equals. It's giving me my equation in standard form. So when it says parallel to this line, well, we know that parallel means we should use the same slope, but we're not immediately given our slope with the way this line is set up. So I need to rewrite my equation a little bit. Okay, now I can go, okay, I wanna use a slope of four and this point, okay, here's my x, y value. So I want the same slope as this line because I want it to run parallel to this line, but I want it hitting this point, two, three. So I have y equals four x plus b and I plug in my point of two, three, and I solve for B, which gives me negative five. And then I put it all together and say, well, if my slope is four and my y-intercept is negative five, that would give me this line. Same idea on D, okay? where I need to first, so it says perpendicular, which tells me I want opposite reciprocal slope. And so I go, okay, so my slope should be, oh wait, I don't know yet. Okay, I need to rewrite this line to know what the slope of this line is in order to be able to say what the opposite reciprocal slope is. So I rewrote my line. I can see my slope is one half. So the slope I'm going to use because it's perpendicular, not parallel, would be the opposite reciprocal to that or negative one or negative two over one or negative two. So now I go, okay, so I'm gonna use the slope of negative two and I have this point. So I can plug in six for y and negative two for x and I'll be able to solve for b. And then I'll be able to take B and take my slope and put it together and say that that's the equation of the line, okay? So now I want you to try the remaining ones. C is gonna be a little bit of a, a trickster, kind of think about what this would mean. Um, and then we'll talk about um, what answers, what lines you should have had there um, <clears throat> after you do the work. Okay, so let's look at uh, B, E, and F here. On um, B, first I need to find what my slope of my original line is, which is one. We want a line perpendicular to this one. So if I take one over one, opposite reciprocal would be negative one over one. And then using X, Y, and that slope, here's my final equation. On E, same idea, so I have to find my slope first. It's perpendicular, so I'd use the opposite reciprocal slope to do the work, and you get a y-intercept at zero. And there's my final equation. F is parallel, so again, I first have to get it in y equals, okay, the slope was negative two. Parallel lines have the same slope, so I'll use a slope of negative two. Use my slope and my point, I get a b value of one, and here's my equation. Now C is the one that's a little bit funky. This is a hoy, right? It's a horizontal line where Y is three. So the line parallel to a horizontal line is gonna be just another horizontal line. So if I think about what that looks like, Y equals three, let's see, I'm gonna to go to my Desmos screen. 
<clears throat> that's not what I had. Y equals three is this horizontal line and it's saying find a line parallel to that that goes through one negative one, which means I just have another parallel, uh, sorry, another horizontal line here. That's what would be um, parallel to this one or I'd have a line with a slope of zero that runs through that. That would just be Y equals one. Oh, sorry, Y equals negative one <clears throat> down here. Okay, you see how that runs through that point. So when I was looking at that, the way I kind of worked through that, I'm not gonna do all the work that I needed to do for the other ones. I'm going, okay, I know it should be Y equals a number. What Y equals here is negative one. Here's the line that's parallel to this one and runs through that point. If it had said what line is perpendicular to that one, by the way, perpendicular to a horizontal line would be the vertical line. So that would be X equals a number and perpendicular to this line through this point would be x equals one, would be the x value of that ordered pair. Those ones are kind of tricky. Um, okay, I think that's, yeah, that's it for today. So tomorrow's notes or um, whenever the, the next set of notes fall um, goes a little bit even deeper into finding the equation of a line um, given different pieces. So today was the focus was really, okay, I have a slope and a point. How do I build an equation from there? How do I find B? Okay, and the next set of notes we'll talk about, well, what if I don't even have the slope? Okay, um, and then we should be able to write a line really given any pieces of information um, once we have that last piece. <clears throat>